Good morning. Let us all stand. Let's take a moment to acknowledge each other's presence as we turn to the people around us. Welcoming all those, especially who are visiting. And after we have made a joyful noise, let us also take a moment to open our hearts to the presence of God in our midst as we lift each other up in prayer, remembering as well to pray for people in dire and destitute situations as we get closer to Christmas for families that are struggling, praying too for those who continue to serve as first responders, those in the front lines, and those who dedicate their lives to the poor and the needy. Today, we are closer to the celebration of the birth of our Lord. Please make sure you silence your cell phones and turn off your alarms so that we can have a respectful and reverential worship. Let us now sing our entrance song. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Gathered to celebrate the sacred mysteries as we come closer to the birth of our Savior, let us heed the call of John the Baptist, whose birth we recall this day. And to him, like him, we hear this message to repent for our sins and be open to the grace of God.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son, according to the flesh, draws near, we pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word, who chose to become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lye. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in the years gone by. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with doom. The word of the Lord. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. 
and her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, no, he will be called John. But they answered her, there is no one among your relatives who has this name. So made his signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. I shared last Monday how in the seminary when I was still the economer and uh, the secretary and many other things that I do is uh, my responsibility, that one of the things I also prepare for is for our media noche, in which is the meal that you take to celebrate the new year because during Christmas we send the seminarians to their homes. And if you're Filipino, one of the things that, that should not disappear or should be part of the meal is ham. We do not have honey bake in the Philippines, but we have the Chinese ham that you have to buy way ahead of time because it's too salty and you have to prepare it in many different ways. You can ask about that, that about me later. <laughs> so one time I was buying this popular ham in uh, Quiapo and there was like a very, very long line, and you know how people are jostling. So they don't have the, the automated number thing, so they gave just as cardboard. And I got mine a little earlier because I knew that there would be a crowd. And they always say, willing to wait? I said, yes, willing to wait, and they give you a number. And while I was standing there waiting for my number to be called, a mature lady came in, and she said, Iho, I only need Iho, which is a term of endearment for a younger person, a man. And he said, Iho, I only need one ham. And he said, Ma'am, do you see this? Are you willing to wait? Okay, I'm willing to wait. So she gave her a number, which is a little bit farther from where I was. And then she, he was calling the numbers, he was calling the numbers and transacting. And finally, the woman said, Iho, I'm willing to wait but I'm not willing to die waiting. <laughs> so when my turn came, and because we have a big seminary, I was buying five ham, and I called her and said, Lola, here's one for you, <laughs> so you don't have to wait. Advent is a time of joyful anticipation and waiting. We are waiting. Remember how you were excited at the very first day of Simbangabi? And how Father, uh, not Father Martin, but Deacon Danix noticed that on the second day, the numbers kind of dwindled. And then they were surprised when the numbers picked up again. <laughs> and tomorrow there will be, I suppose, we'll have more in number except for those who will be traveling to be with family and friends. Well, there were two women, too, who have been waiting as part of a people of Israel. Because in Malachi, he was making a proclamation that a messenger shall come to announce the coming of the Savior. And two women were given the opportunity to take full participation in that history of salvation that is unfolding. And one of which was our Blessed Mother Mary, whom Father Martin in his biblical lesson yesterday reminded us as the Ark of the Covenant, the new Ark of the Covenant, the new bearer of the presence of God among his people. 
And before him was also an important a role of a messenger, John the Baptist, who left in the womb of Elizabeth. And that is why people were anticipating and were waiting for her birth because they knew that it was already impossible for her to bear a child. She was barren for many decades. Church tradition has her bearing St. John the Baptist in her 90s. Have you ever heard of a woman in her 90s? You don't say congratulations, you say, I'll pray for you. <laughs> and you probably call the priest and say, give, him, give her the anointing of the sick. <laughs> but then they, when they were anticipating and the birth of John happened, and after eight days in the Jewish tradition, they do the tradition of the priest, and then afterwards they name the child. So when they were asking for the name of the child, St. Elizabeth, whom we already know is enlightened by the Holy Spirit, said, his name is John. But you have to realize that women during the time of Jesus, during the time of John the Baptist, were second-class citizens. They really rely more on the word of the men. So they didn't, no, no, he cannot. He should be named Zechariah after the father to give him the honor of being uh, the, having a child at his old age and he being part of the Levite family, the priestly family, or none of your relatives is named John. But finally, when they confirmed from Zechariah, who was made dumb because he initially doubted the word of God, wrote on a tablet, his name is John, Yehohanan in Hebrew. And what does that mean? God is gracious, God is merciful to us. And after he confirmed and concurred with his wife, Elizabeth, that his name is John, his mouth was opened. And tomorrow we will hear his song of praise. Because I believe Elizabeth recognized that the child in her womb is before becomes her son, his first and foremost, God's. Sometimes we think our children are our own, but we never realize that our children, all of us have been given for our parents to nurture us. I remember my mom, and I've told this many times, when I was already a teenager and I was trying to be a, a, becoming more and more rebellious, she said, you know, if I knew that you're going to turn up this way in one of our heated arguments, I would have pressed your nose when you were a baby. <laughs> and I would always retort, and I would open my mouth to breathe. And that get me to, to more trouble. <laughs> but the thing is, sometimes in our lives, our children, no matter how much we nurture them, how much we bring them to God, fall in the wayside. We're lucky if our children continues to nurture that faith, but sometimes they don't. I have a nephew, nephews, two in Japan and uh, one in the Philippines, who I continue to pray for. When I always remind him, I always tell him I love him, I pray for him, I pray for at Mass. I pray that one day he will be once again religious because he would always claim, Nino, which is Godfather, I am spiritual, but I'm not religious. But if I realize him, I see his posts, and I talk with him, I know his heart is in the right place. But things happen in the world, and he asks the question, why? And I pray that one day will come when he will ask the question, how? In his own way, he's trying to solve the problems of the world. He's working for a company that has values. He said he resigned from one company because that company did, was, did not have the right values and he wanted to be in a company that has right values and morality. And I laud him for that. I appreciate him for that. But then the question is, when they named him John, meaning God is gracious, maybe we can pause for a while and think about our own names and think about our own lives because they were wondering, how will this life turn out? What will happen to this child? How will this child be? Because the circumstances of his birth, the circumstances of the naming 
of this child is really the hand of God. But isn't the hand of God also present in our lives? Many, many times. But do we discern? Do, are we like the two women in, that we have heard, our Blessed Mother Mary, who continued to stand her ground and said, let it be done unto me according to your word. I am the handmaid of the Lord. And Elizabeth, who found strength when the new Ark of the Covenant visited her, and she drew from that so that she stood also her ground when she had to proclaim his name, which is his, her way of proclaiming the glory of God. The question is, do we also take a stand? Do we also take an, a gift of self so that we may do and accept the will of God? Last Monday, I received a letter from our, one of our parishioners because last Sunday, she spoke with me and she said, her husband is in the ICU. So I told her, we'll pray, and if you can leave the name, then I will come and visit and give him the anointing. And then I didn't hear any more that Sunday. So Monday, I was surprised when I found the letter. And in that letter, she explained how her husband has already been revived three times. And he's still in the ICU. She's praying that she will be able, he will be able to come home for Christmas. And then week I came and anointed her husband last month, Tuesday. And I spoke with her and she said at the end, Father, I don't know what will happen, but I will accept the will of God. I pray, but I will accept the will of God. Yesterday, a woman also called our parish office to be anointed because during the time of the pandemic when we were still worshiping outside in the patio, she was diagnosed with cancer. And she said, every activity that we had, when we had the drive through blessing, when we have these things being done, she said, it was just timing with my struggle and journey with cancer. And now she said the cancer came back. And it's now on stage four. But she said, I trust in the Lord. Let it be done unto me, and I will trust in his will. Maybe two days before the birth of our Lord, let us ask ourselves, truly, Lord, it is a joyful time, and we anticipate your coming. But make us stronger, Lord. Make us stronger in our love, that we manifest in patience towards one another. May we manifest it in trust in you that no matter what happens, what circumstance come into our lives. Today, let us also honor mothers for the sacrifice that they have made, the very same sacrifice shown to us by Elizabeth, Saint Elizabeth and our blessed mother Mary, that indeed that the lives entrusted to us, especially to our mothers, may be truly gifts they can offer to God and gifts they can share with others. Let us pray for our mothers who are here present with us and who may be now together with the Lord in our true home in heaven. And let's thank them for the sacrifice that they've made. Let's thank them for the moments that they've showed us the way they planted the seeds of faith, hope, and love in our hearts. And let's say thank you to our Blessed Mother Mary and Saint Elizabeth for the example of strength, conviction, and love. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, oh, let it be. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. 
And when the broken hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. For though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer, let it be, let it be. And when the night is cloudy, there is still a light that shines on me. Shine until tomorrow, let it be. I wake up to the sound of music, Mother Mary comes to me. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, word of the Zechariah and Elizabeth called their son John, which means God is gracious. Trusting in God's graciousness and generosity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church and government leaders may truly show God's graciousness by their loving and persevering service to God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may appreciate our Christian name and dignity and live up to our baptismal promises. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That families may renew their love, solidarity, and support for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may receive comfort and consolation from the prayers and encouragement of their families and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may finally enter the home of our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up to the Lord the intentions and petitions we hold in our hearts for our families and our loved ones, and the intentions for whom this Mass is offered, the eternal repose of the soul, of Emmy Brion and the intention and for the health and healing of Sue Stegall and for the intentions of Miss Catherine Marte. We lift up also the intentions we have received in thanksgiving and for the needs of the priests of the Santiago de Compostela, for the Aguado and Aniceto families, for Lydia de Ragos, for Avi Ison. Cassandra Rojas and family, Jeronimo Enriquez, Ramirez family, Vergara Toriano and Davis families, J.D. Madaug, Clemens family, Walter Vides, Colleen Clemens, Limbaring Felarca family, Brandon and Lulet, Lulet Chu, Bill and Abby and Daniel Gatrell, Roland, Len, Lena, Morales and family, Christopher Hansen and family, Schwingle family, Lea Laxon, Alvin David, Chris, Mercy Garcia and family, Wyatt and Ellie Mae Black, for Arnel Tagatak, 
and Ricardo and Rose Kimlat. We pray for the health and strength needed and comfort for Angelina, Angelita Venson, Grace Hernandez, Flordelisa Inclino, Redentor David, Lori Inson, Lynn Maglalang, Linda Fronda, John Malabanan, Pete and Presi Kirsten, Roger Inson Sr., Jacinto and Benilda Loyola, Edmund and Michelle Del Rosario, Mary Ann Aniceto, the Gonzalez family, John Patrick Messio, Joshua Clements, Hertrudes Pace, Conchita Bayudan, Heidi Vides, Monica Sassis, Martin Bryan Co., Edubi Sigua, June Gonzalez, Cynthia Gutierrez, Edubiuna Peroche, Kim Show Walter, Rosita Ong, June Gonzalez, and Benjamin Madaram. We pray to the Lord. And for our dearly departed, Joseph Kamandu, John Ko and you, Brian Waigi Ko, Jason Kaduf, Marivic Retuya Junio, Herminia Salvador, Ken Allen, Dax Maglalang, Lydia Inson, Araceli Octa, Lulu Frias, Alexander Chu, Charito Castillo, Brianna Carcel, Josefino Eugenia, and Francis Mugol, Nicanora Vargas, Angelo C. Ling, Lucia Ngokla, Wu Chi Ling, Wu Ching San, Chan, Martha Tran, Sixto Natividad, and Cesar Loyola, Robert Martin, Catalino Turla, Emimina Balis Balisilico, Eustolia Tuason, Jesus Patricia and Jerry Madaug, Chelsea Marie Menes, Jeronimo and Roy Nalus, Caridad Ponce, Carmen Burs Bustos, Enrique Nalus, Father Luis Serrano, the babies of Garcia Sembrano, Enriquez and Canlas families, Marjorie Sunga, Jay Clements, Meli Barrios, Trinidad Villonco, Vincent Vides, Manuel Preciosa and Clarita Aniceto, Thelma and Ramon Aguado Jr., Giovanni Aguiling, Vicente Gallego, Joselito, Rogelio Martina, and Lea Rodriguez, Eli Morales, Nathaniel Sigua, Jose and Adelida Haro, Laura and Ernesto Laxon, Aurelio Lim Sr., Kenneth Mary and Rudy Perez, Logan Hayes, Katerina Calderon, Ana Salamis, Lucy Gomez, Lorraine Gonzalez, Oscar Salunga Sr., Dora Garde, Minardo Encarnacion, Soledad 14, Amelia Nuki, Ann Palacio, Ariana Guajardo, Monica Sassis, Priscilla Agustin, and Bernard Columbres, and Felisa Raimundo. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, may the life of John the Baptist inspire us to greater holiness. Fill us with this spirit as we work in the service of your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. May this oblation by which divine worship in its fullness has been inaugurated for us be our perfect reconciliation with you, O Lord, that we may celebrate with minds made pure the nativity of our Redeemer who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Christo ay Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Santiago de Compostela, and with all the saints on this constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And to our brothers and sisters who are worshiping with us online, and for those among us who are unable to receive our Lord Jesus, we join them in prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, I embrace as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant your peace, O Lord, to those who have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So just for FYI, the song, Let It Be, was not written for Mama Mary, okay? <laughs> one of the Beatles, in one of his difficult times, and I think at that time he was also in, under the influence of drugs, had a dream, and in, in his dream, his mother, whose name was Mary, came to him. And these words were words that he, he felt she said to him. But I think it also speaks truly of who our Blessed Mother Mary is to us. And I think songs as this, even though they start out as something that is from a different source, I think God can write in crooked lines, right? If Elizabeth can bear a child, then God, with God, nothing is impossible. So I'd like you to remember to pray for each other, especially those who are, have gone on trips to visit families who will be traveling. Let us pray for their safety. Let us pray that they may have this wonderful time with family and friends. Let's now pray to our loving mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And to Saint Joseph, hail guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God then trusted his only Son, in you Mary place her trust, with you Christ was secure and safe. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us to the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast unto hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all and your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Humayo kaya sakapaya paan, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. One more day.
Have a blessed day, everyone.